sexual reproduction reproductive organs which produce gametes and those reproductive organs they are there in the same thallus or different thallus already we have discussed but for meat purpose we should remember those things homothallic is equal to monoecious condition is bisexual heterothallic dioecious condition is unisexual and staminate flowers are having pistilos pheres pistilate flowers are having staminodes this we should remember because the chances are there as far as confusion is concerned and now it's time to discuss about during gamete formation which type of cell division takes place a pattern of cell division during gamete formation we do have plants like algae fungi bryophytes in these plants plant body is haploid and is said to be gametophyte and is haploid only one set of chromosomes plants like pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms plant bodies deployed in nature and is said to be sporophyte it is diploid two sets of chromosomes this we must remember algae fungi and bryophytes their main plant body is said to be gametophyte and they do have one set of chromosomes means haploid plants like pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms are having the plant body which is diploid in nature and is said to be sporophyte but already we know that gametes are haploid gametes are haploid in algae fungi bryophytes main plant body is gametophyte and is haploid from this we need haploid gametes this main plant body itself is haploid we need haploid gametes only so that a cell division takes place here it is mitosis by mitosis 
here haploid so that haploid gametes will form and tilidophiles, gymnosperms, angiosperms where the main plant body is a sporophyte and is a diploid in nature but we need haploid gametes haploid gametes but the plant body is diploid we need haploid gametes there should be a reduction in chromosomal number that is taking place in meiosis but in general we used to say during gametogenesis which type of cell division takes place we used to mention meiosis because gametes are haploid but more particularly with respect to group of plants if they ask in the general terminology during gametogenesis which type of cell division meiosis in general with respect to particular group of organisms if they ask the question like in algae, fungi and bryophytes gametes are formed by which type of cell division mitosis because the plant body is haploid gametes are also haploid the type of cell division is mitosis and if they ask the question in the pteridophytes, <coughs> gymnosperms and angiosperms where gametes are formed by which type of cell division? Meiosis because the plant body is diploid and we need haploid gametes and there should be a reduction in chromosomal number that takes place during meiosis and for our neat purpose we should remember this as well concern to this the questions can be asked three questions in the general during gametogenesis which type of cell division takes place meiosis with respect to first three groups during gamete formation the cell division which is taking place is mitosis during these three groups of plants if the question is asked during gamete formation or gametogenesis meiosis takes place this we have to tell and we have come to know whether they are there in if plants having gametophyte and they are producing a plants having sporophyte but gametes are always haploid always haploid they just have one set of chromosomes if they are male gametes paternal set of chromosomes if they are female gametes they do have maternal set of chromosomes let us know about some organisms they are diploid number of chromosomes and in their gametes haploid number of chromosomes sometimes they may ask anyone among them that's why let us have the chart in which we can write the organisms their diploid number of chromosomes and the haploid number of chromosomes in their gametes organisms diploid number of chromosomes that is 2n haploid number in gametes
first one gorilla the deployed number of chromosomes is 48 then the haploid number of chromosomes in their gametes is 24 man deployed number of chromosomes is 46 and haploid 23 monkey deployed number of chromosomes is 44 and haploid 22 house fly chromosomal number is 12 and in their gametes 8 rat In their gametes, 21 chromosomes. In the dog, diploid number of chromosomes is 78 and haploid number is 39. Cat deployed number is 38, hence haploid number in their gametes 19. Ophioglossal a pteridophyte plant 1200 and 60 plus deployed number in their gametes 630 plus plus in the case till the variation in chromosomal number is going on <coughs> and highest number of chromosomes we could notice in this ophioglossal Apple, 34, in their gametes, 70, rice, chromosomal number is 24, in their gametes, 12. Maze Total number of chromosomes deployed number 20 in their gametes 10 Fruit fly Total number of chromosomes is 08 in their gametes Butterfly 380 380 and in their gametes 190 190 Potato 48 in their limits, 24.
O'Neill. Thirty-two. Indirgamates. Sixteen. These are some of the examples. Where the total or deployed deployed number of chromosomes in their body cells and in their gametes haploid number of chromosomes. This is as far as number is concerned. It's about gametes, gamete formation, and how many chromosomes are there in those gametes. First group of events, free fertilization events. We have discussed about gamete formation and now second event is gamete transfer gamete transfer among male and female gametes male gametes are motile movable but female gametes are non motile but some exceptional cases are there like uh, unicellular algae their gametes are isogametes they are with both of them male and female gametes are having flesh in them both male and female gametes are motile movable but in the rest of the organisms male gamete is motile and the female gamete is non motile so that for they uh, they have to get fertilized means they have to come in contact in case of lower organisms plants water medium is required for the gamete transfer in case of algae in case of fungi even bryophytes even pteridophytes for their gamete transfer water medium is required then only male and female gametes will come in contact with each other then only fertilization is possible and in case of animals where there is a internal fertilization there is a definite means for the contact of male and female gametes in case of flowering plants where pollen grains they are the carriers of male gametes they have to carry to the stigma of that carpel that is taking place by a process named pollination what is pollination <laughs> pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from this is anther where pollen grains will form what are pollen grains they are the carriers of male gametes they are the carriers of male gametes this is the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma this is stigma of carpel it is ori in the ori there are ovules in which the male uh, female gamete is there and the pollen grains they are the carriers of male gametes pollination is a process where transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma anther to the stigma 
Anther is a part of stamen and stigma is a part of carpel. These stamens and carpels, they are there in same flower in bisexual and in unisexual flower that stamens are there in one flower and carpels are there in another flower as they are unisexual. Then we should mention all these things. Even those unisexual flowers, both of them may be there in same plant that is monoecious condition that male flower is there in one plant and a female flower is there in another plant that is dioecious condition but they must be of same species we have to connect all these things then only we can give the definition for pollination transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of same flower it is in bisexual condition or different flowers this is in case of unisexual flowers of same plant both the male and the female flowers are there in same plant monoecious condition or different plants that is dioecious condition male flower in one plant and a female flower in another plant dioecious plant or different plants of same species of same species this is the definition for pollination pollination is a transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of same flower or different flowers of same plant or different plants of same species let me repeat one more time transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of same flower or different flowers of same plant or different plants of same species that is the definition and one more thing I have mentioned at the end pollen grains from uh, anther should fall on the stigma of same species in a case for example a pollen grains from flowers of mango fall on the stigma of neem there would be no fertilization at all because they are belonging to different species and where no chance for the pollination achieved and no chance for the fertilization also if it in uh, in case if it could be possible we could have got different fruits like <coughs> ningo mango plus neem ningo but it's not possible they must be belonging to same species yes the transfer of pollen uh, gametes is taking place in this way in lower organisms water medium is badly needed for the transfer and in case of animals uh, where the internal fertilization is there means where uh, there is a definite mean for male and female gametes come in contact and in case of flowering plants the transfer of male gametes takes place by the process named pollination a process named pollination yes it's about gamete transfer and now we have come to the pre-fertilization events completed gametes now formed and transferred 
and the second event is fertilization. Fertilization. What is fertilization? Is a process where the fusion of haploid male gametes with haploid female gametes. to form diploid zygote fertilization is a process where the fusion of haploid male gametes with haploid female gametes to form diploid zygotes in case of animals the male gamete is a sperm and the female gamete is egg or ovum zygote will form. In case of plants, male gametes they are anthrozooids or spermatozooids fused with egg or ovum to form zygote. That is the first formed a diploid cell in the life cycle. And the zygote, you know, whether it is formed in animals or in plants, is said to be zygote only. And this process fertilization is also named as. Singly. Instead of asking what is fertilization, they may ask what is syngamy. A syngamy is a process where haploid male gamete fuses with haploid female gamete to form diploid zygote. Diploid zygote. That's all. There are some organisms like honeybees, some lizards, honeybees, some lizards, where we do see a different type of Fertilization, where no fertilization. Female gametes, those are egg, you know, or ovum. It is haploid in nature. It becomes a zygote without fertilization. Without fertilization. Egg or ovum becomes a zygote without fertilization. And this kind of process is said to be parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis. Here, eggs directly become eggs. Zygote. And that is uh, haploid only directly become angles without fertilization. Without fertilization. That's what you know uh, those uh, female gametes they are haploid in nature and the individuals will be haploid only. That's why you know in honeybees there are three forms of honeybees there is a single queen which is a diploid and is formed 
by the fertilization and drones they are the males which are haploid they are formed by parthenogenesis and workers they are deployed females but they are sterile where they are also formed by fertilization among the honeybees parthenogenesis takes place in a drones males they are haploid in nature because directly egg becomes zygote then becomes egg one is well. drones are the natural example where parthenogenesis takes place this is also the process taking place in case no fertilization among all the eggs in honey bees some get fertilized with the, the sperms hence the formation of diploid zygote and become diploid egg ones but some eggs without being fertilized they become haploid zygote and is directly become egg ones that is parthenogenesis and as far as fertilization is concerned it is of two types one internal fertilization second one is external fertilization internal fertilization and external fertilization internal fertilization is one way the fusion of male and female gametes takes place in the genital system of females genital system means reproductive system of females male and female gametes get fused and they form the zygote in the genital system of females reproductive system of females hence the name internal fertilization internal fertilization in case of the tiles birds and mammals there is a internal fertilization because the fusion of male and female gametes takes place in the reproductive system or a genital system of that female's body external fertilization is one way the fertilization takes place the male and female gametes fusion takes place outside the genital system of female's body that the male and the female gametes they get fused not in the genital system of females outside the genital system of females <coughs> it means that takes place in water medium the example for this aquatic animals like fishes even amphibian like frog where we can see the external fertilization that sperm and egg male and female gamete they get fused in water medium not in the genital system <coughs> in fishes and also in frog but in frog you know there is a pseudo copulation in a frog there is a sexual dimorphism female is larger in size and male is smaller in size and male used to produce 
some sort of cracking sound during rainy season because water body is needed for their fertilization during rainy season you know here and there water bodies will be there that uh, small meal used to produce some sort of cracking sound by hearing that cracking sound female frog will come close to male male frog sits on the back of female and both will swim together when the female frog liberates eggs in cluster at the same time the male frog <coughs> liberates sperm so that egg and sperm they get fused in water medium but this kind of thing is not copulation zero copulation just male frog sits on the back of female they swim together when a female frog liberates eggs in cluster because those eggs are having a jelly coat they are in cluster at the same time male frog liberates sperms so that eggs and sperm as they are liberated at a time most of them get fertilized that is said to be zero copulation that zero copulation is there in frog it is also external fertilization only that is also external fertilization the differences between internal and external fertilization the first difference will be their definition in internal fertilization the fusion of male and female gametes takes place in the genital system of females whereas in external fertilization the fusion of male and female gametes takes place outside the genital system of females in internal fertilization there is the fusion of male and female gametes in the body fluid in genital system in external fertilization male and female gametes get fused in water medium because external they get fused in water medium third one in internal fertilization the production of female gamete is just one at a time only one egg will be released but in external fertilization you know there is a production of large number of eggs large number of eggs as external fertilization most of the eggs work get a contact with female uh, sperms that's what in internal fertilization just one egg is produced in case of external fertilization large number of eggs are produced last one in internal fertilization to introduce the, to introduce the sperms in the genital system of females a sexual act named <coughs> intercourse is necessary and the introduction of that sperms takes place by the genital organ in males named penis by the penis there is a introduction of sperms in the genital system of females and during the sexual act sexual intercourse but in case of external fertilization there will be no sexual intercourse even males don't have the penis the male genital organ penis is absent in the males those which perform external fertilization already we have discussed about 
two events. One is pre-fertilization events. Second is fertilization. Now it's time to discuss about post-fertilization events. Post fertilization events. Here, when male gamete fuses with female gamete, leading to the formation of zygote. It is diploid. Hence, formed the zygote undergoes various developmental steps before it becomes young one. In case of the organisms which are having a gametophyte as their main plant body. Take for example in uh, algae, fungi, bryophytes, here the main plant body is gametophyte, it is haploid so that hence form the zygote you know, it undergoes meiosis leading to the formation of haploid spores those haploid spores give rise to the haploid gametophyte in these uh, organisms the main stages are haploid in nature. Only one stage which is diploid is a child and rest of them are in haploid. That's why you know, in these organisms we do find haplobiotic life cycle. In that life cycle you know maximum stages are haploid in nature only one diploid stage that is zygote spell haplobiotic life cycle when there is a formation of gametophyte and in case of angiosperms gymnosperms where the main plant body is sporophyte main plant body is sporophyte it is diploid in nature so that where zygote never undergoes meiosis to form haploid spores. It divides repeatedly forming a diploid number of cells only and they will undergo various developmental stages. Based on that you know we do have haplobiotic type of life cycle here haploid stages are more in number and diplobiotic type of life cycle where maximum diploid stages will be there only at the time of spore formation from that sporophyte it would be haploid and some are there where haplo diplo biotic type of life cycle where both haploid and diploid stages more or less equal in number 
in the life cycle. It means once after fertilization the zygote is formed, it may undergo meiosis to form haploid spores. That is in case of the plants which are having gametophyte as their main plant body. Zygote undergoes mitosis forming diploid cells that is in case of plants which are undergoing <coughs> which are having the main plant body sporophyte which is diploid in number and in case of animals how this zygote it becomes embryo at starting a single cell zygote undergoes repeated mitotic division leading to the formation of a ball of cells and those ball of cells that stage is said to be murilla and a cavity will appear inside then it becomes blastula two layers will appear it becomes uh, gastula in mature gastula there will be a three germ layers will form it means that zygote undergoes the developmental stages like Morula, Blastula, Gastula, Neurula and finally the zygote becomes embryo. embryo. The formation of embryo is said to be embryogenesis. embryogenesis and the embryo which is formed whether its development takes place within the female's body or is taking place outside the female's body we do have two types of animals those are oviparous animals Second is viviparous animals. What are viviparous animals? In simple term, we used to say they are egg laying animals. But actually, in viviparous animals, the female, the females won't give the support by their body as far as embryo development is concerned. The development of embryo, it takes place not in female's body. It is taking place in the egg itself. These uh, oviparous animals, you know, they are cladoic animals. They lay eggs and those eggs are having protective covering made up of calcarea. And in that egg, embryo development takes place. It means a mother does not give shelter and nourishment to the embryo. That is oviparous animals. They are commonly named as egg laying animals. And viviparous animals. Here, mother gives shelter as well as nourishment during the development of embryo because the embryo is getting developed in the uterus of mother and these viviparous animals are commonly named as they give birth to young ones and that young one you know it gets a shelter as well as a nourishment from the mother and for oviparous animals you know the examples are reptiles and birds and viviparous animals mammals are the examples they give birth to young ones and the embryo gets shelter and the nourishment in mother's body in addition to this only exceptional case we do see oo vv oviviparous animals one such example for this 
is Scorpio. Scorpio is an exceptional case. Whoa, we we parasite animals means here mother gives just shelter but not the nourishment during the development of embryo. Young ones which are developed in mother's body without getting nourishment. In uh, above we know that the embryo neither gets nourishment nor shelter. But in VB Paris, embryo gets shelter as well as nourishment. But in OVB Paris animals, embryo gets shelter but no nourishment and the young ones which are developed in the body of that mother but without getting the nourishment. And the example is Scorpio. They may ask the example for OO viviparous animals. The example is Scorpio is an exceptional case. In our text only they have given these two types. But remember OO viviparous nature is also there. That is there in Scorpio. Young ones are developed inside the body of mother but no nourishment to them. It's about uh, the post fertilization events in animals as well and in plants you know after fertilization that zygote which is formed in case of uh, flowering plants is there in ovule. The zygote is there in ovule and many ovules are there in ori. After fertilization, you know, the zygote which is formed, it becomes embryo. Oil becomes seed and ori becomes fruit. Ori becomes fruit. This is in case of plants. Here, after fertilization, the zygote which is there inside the ovules and ovules are there in ori. After fertilization, you know, the zygote which is formed becomes embryo and ovules become seed and ori becomes fruit. And the fruits which we have seen are covered by the pericarp. A fruit wall is named as pericarp. And uh, the types of fruits and all we can see in next topic. In this topic, the things which we have discussed is the phenomenon and the terminology is concerned with the sexual organs. All these things we have discussed. Only this is introductory topic that is reproduction. But in the next topics like reproduction in flowering plants and reproduction in human beings where with respect to those plants and animals we are going to study about the systems. And while dealing with all these things uh, where we have find out uh, two types of fertilization. One is external and internal. In the external fertilization there is a heavy loss of male and female gametes because their fertilization is there in water. That's why you know in case of fishes they have made different mode to bring Yanks and sperms come in contact with each other. Uh, you'll be surprised to know in one fish, that is uh, three spinal fish, male goes to bottom with the help of sea weeds, it makes the nest and it comes up and starts doing dance in front of female fishes. And uh, when female fish follows, that male fish will go to the nest where it is having the nest is having both the 
end open that by seeing that nest female fish enters in lays the eggs and goes out and a male fish enters in liberates the sperms over the egg and goes out so that those eggs will get fertilized and the same thing in a frog you know where male frog sits on the back of female there is a pseudo copulation they swim together when female frog liberates egg in a cluster at the same time male frog liberates sperms so that egg and sperm liberated at a time means all of them come in contact with each other and they get fertilized this is about the first topic and the next topic is reproduction in flowering plants yes